And what tank would you choose if you're going into war? You got to choose one of these. Which one would it be and, and basically why? Russia has so many tanks. It's, it's, it's crazy how many tanks they have. The Challenger 2 is a beast. There's always a debate on what tanks are the best in the world. And today we're going to look at the Russian T-90 and the British Challenger 2, which I've heard so much about. And I believe recently a grouping of NATO countries pledged a few hundred tanks combined and the Challenger 2, I think, was within this pledge. So I'd like to see the difference from their armor and speed and technology and cannon since they may now be hitting the grounds of Ukraine. So let's jump into it. Let's see this comparison and we'll go from there. The frictions between Russia and the West of Europe have gone up in recent years. As a result, the possibility of British and Russian tanks fighting in a potential European war is not a far-fetched reality. This is quite dated now. This is actually only a year old or maybe a little bit over a year old now. And I've heard this statement countless times and you're always like, yeah, okay, whatever. It's never going to happen. And it's actually going to happen, just not under the British, not under the US, not under Germany. It's all just going to be under Ukrainians trained to use these beautiful yet terrifying machines of war in combat, which is crazy. So how quickly things change this is showing it. Russia's latest variant of the T-90 tank could be a formidable threat to the British main battle tank, the Challenger II. Although both war machines are hailed as exceptional pieces of military hardware, only one can come out as victorious on the battlefield. We thought it would be cool to compare Britain's and Russia's main battle tanks in this video and yeah. try to determine which tank is superior in terms of speed, armor, fire control system, and firepower. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you're alerted when we make a new upload. Since we haven't actually seen these two tanks in combat against each other yet, I don't really want to make any assumptions or comments about that because we don't really know what's going to happen. I mean, I would assume the Challenger is just in general a better tank in multiple levels, and I think the T-90 is built so it's going to be more mass produced. Russia has so many tanks, it's, it's it's crazy how many tanks they have, but I think in turn their quality is definitely not as good. Beast. Number one, the T-90 has been in service since 1992. More than 3,200 units have been built so far with per unit cost of $5 million. Yeah, that, that's the tank nothing. is operated by a crew of three people. The T-90 comes in at a weight of 48 tons. The tank is 32 feet long, 13 feet wide, and 7 feet high. With a 1,000 horsepower engine, the tank can reach a top speed of 37 miles per hour. The operational range of the tank is around 342 miles. The T-90 is armed with a 125 millimeter smoothbore gun. On the other hand, right. the Challenger 2 has been in service since 1998. Around 447 units have been built so far, with per unit cost of $9 million. It holds a crew of four people. The combat ready weight of the tank is 75 tons. The tank is 44 feet long, 12 feet wide, and 8 feet high. With a 1,200 horsepower engine, it can reach a maximum speed of 37 miles per hour. The Challenger 2 is a beast, especially comparing it to the much cheaper, lighter T-90. But of course, like in World War II against Germany, Russia's whole goal, and it, they achieved their goal, was pretty much just to swarm big, heavy German tanks. And it succeeded. So I do see both sides. I do see both sides. The operational range of the tank is 342 miles. The Challenger 2 is armed with a 120mm rifled gun. Number two, Russia's T-90 is much lighter than the English tank. However, it does have good armor and a fairly strong defensive sweep. First, the T-90's armor is made up of composite material. The tank's second tier of defenses relies on explosive reactive armor, which consists of two armor plates with an explosive charge core sandwiched in between. Finally, the T-90 packs a countermeasure system known as Curtain. This system has a series of laser warning sensors positioned around the tank. On the contrary, the Challenger 2 armor is one of the best in the world. 
It's equipped mm -hmm. with second generation Chabam armor, two times stronger than steel. On the battlefield, the tank can be prepared with additional armor plates and bars with ERA kits. A chemical, nuclear, and biological protection system is located in the turret bustle. Wow. Five smoke grenade dischargers are outfitted on each side of the turret. The Challenger 2 can also set a smoke screen by injecting diesel fuel into engine exhausts as well. Number 3. Various models of T-90 tanks are powered by different engines. The latest variant of T-90 is powered by a V-12 diesel engine producing 1,000 horsepower. The engine can be fueled by kerosene, benzene, or diesel. With the help of this engine, the tank can attain a top speed of 37 miles per hour on paved roads and 28 miles an hour on rough terrain. The operational range of the tank is 342 miles. In contrast, the Challenger 2 is powered by a Perkins V12 diesel engine producing 1,200 horsepower. Assisted by an 8-speed gearbox, the tank can travel at a maximum speed of 37 miles per hour on paved roads and 25 miles per hour off-road. The operational range of the British tank is 342 miles on-road and 160 miles on rough terrain. Nice. Number 4. Nice. The T-90's fire control system is fully computerized, but features a manual override as well. Now this is where, when it gets to the technology, I really don't know much about either tank, but this one will be uh, interesting to see. The Commander and Gunner's fire control system contain day fire, night vision, and a thermal imaging site for target identification. The laser rangefinder allows for firing on the move, even in low lighting conditions. The latest variant of the T-90 has improved network-centric warfare capabilities in coordination with the latest Armada project vehicles. The T-90 is also equipped with hunter-killer operations with a common engagement sequence. Similarly, the Challenger 2 is equipped with a digital fire control system to manage all of the sighting instruments. The Commander has a gyro-stabilized panoramic sight with laser rangefinder assisted by eight periscopes giving 360 degrees field of view. And the incredible thing to me about maybe a lot of tanks, but Western tanks especially, I've seen them on, and, and non-Western tanks, I've seen it with Japan. Watch how smooth and stable this the main gun is on the Challenger 2. Similarly, the Challenger 2 is equipped with a digital fire control system to manage all of the sighting instruments. The Commander has a gyro-stabilized panoramic there. sight with laser rangefinder assisted by eight periscopes giving 360 degrees field of view. The tank Incredible. is also outfitted with thermal observation and gunnery sight. This system provides night vision and thermal imaging displayed on the commander and gunner's monitors. The system is called Hunter Killer Optics, which helps the gunner to engage the target while the commander designates another. When the original target is destroyed, the turret turns automatically and the process begins again. Number 5. The T-90's primary armament includes a 125mm smoothbore gun. The gun is stabilized in two axes and fitted with a thermal sleeve around the barrel. Fed by an automatic loader, the gun can fire a variety of ammunition, including armor piercing, anti-tank, and high explosive fragmentation rounds. The T-90's gun can also fire anti-tank sniper guided missiles. Hmm. The system is intended to engage tanks, low-flying helicopters, and UAVs with a range of four miles. The tank is armed with a remote-controlled 12.7mm anti-aircraft machine gun with an effective range of 1.25 miles. The T-90 is also armed with a 7.62mm machine gun. In contrast, the Challenger 2 is armed with a 120mm rifled gun. Made by high-tech steel and alloys, this is the only rifle gun fitted to a NATO tank. Other features include a thermal sleeve, fume extraction, and an electric stabilization. The gun is loaded manually and is compatible with all NATO standard ammunition. The turret is capable of 360 degrees rotation, and the weapon elevation range is from minus 10 degrees to plus 20 degrees. Once again, that stabilization right there is always so fascinating to me. I don't remember which nation's tank it was, but I remember watching a video where they put a glass of wine on the end of the barrel and moved it around, and it was just perfectly stable, did not drop off. Incredible technology. The gun can hit a moving target with armor piercing round for more than two miles, while high explosive squash head rounds have a longer range of five miles. The wow. Challenger 2 is also equipped with a 7.62 millimeter chain gun located to the left side of the main gun. The loader has access to a 7.62 millimeter anti-air machine gun mounted on the roof of the tank. 
The T90 is fitted with a 1,000 horsepower engine, while the Challenger 2 is powered by a 1,200 horsepower engine. Both tanks have top speeds of 37 miles per hour. Yeah. However, the T90 has better cross-country performance due to its wider chassis and higher power-to-weight ratio. The Russian tank has an automatic gun reloading system, whereas the Challenger 2 can only be fed manually. This removes the need for a manual loader in the tank and reduces the crew to three. Both systems have their own advantages and disadvantages. Both tanks are equipped with an automatic target tracking system, also known as Hunter Killer, where the tank commander plays Hunter Observer functions and passes the data to the gunner in sequence. Both tanks carry different types of guns. However, the T-90 main gun can effectively hit a target from up to 2.5 miles, whereas the British cannon can hit a target from 2 miles. The T-90's gun is capable of launching a guided anti-tank missile with the ability to destroy any armored object within a range of 4 miles. However, the Challenger 2 can also hit a target with high explosive squash head rounds from 5 miles. Yep. So which tank do you think would win in a one-to-one -one battle? Russia's T-90 or the British Challenger 2? Let us know in the comments. All right, and that was that. Let me know your thoughts about this. We've all seen Russia's tanks and the turrets popping off. They're getting all sorts of nicknames and everything. But I could only imagine if I were to be in a tank, if I were to go into battle with a tank, I would hands down choose the Challenger 2. Plus they have quite a bit of experience with you know the US tanks during the past few wars in the Middle East and against Saddam's forces, which I think at the time was something like the third or fourth largest military in the world. And they had so many Russian tanks. They had so many. I, I know they're dated, but they're known to be kind of formidable, at least from what I think of them as. And they just got completely wiped out with a mixture of UN tanks and just hundreds of them. It, incredible, maybe thousands. And what tank would you choose if you're going into war? You gotta choose one of these, which one would it be and, and basically why. I've heard a lot of, or there's been a few changes to, I've heard about the new armor. They may have mentioned it in this video. I don't know if that was the, the new armor. Out of curiosity, I wondered how many tanks are there on either side? How many Challenger 2s and how many T-90s? So for Challenger 2s, the number that have been built, this says around 447. Whereas if you go to the T-90, of course, we all know they make a ton of them. 750 to 1,000 units of T-90s have been built. I'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, which tank you choose, and we'll get in a discussion below. So thank you for joining. I'll catch you in the next video. Always love learning about British military equipment, just military in general, and have a good rest of your day.